What happens when you take two serious anglers, drop them on an unknown body of water, and give them a mission to conquer the lake and each other? Two different patterns, one unknown lake, with no practice and no preparation. Who will catch the most fish and how? The only way to find out is to go commando. The mission is simple. Two experienced anglers. Two different battle plans going head to head on one unfamiliar body of water. Steve Panaz takes us to the front line of fishing to learn the lessons of the Lake Commandos. When you go commando, you embrace the unknown. You leave your comfort zone and rely on your instincts. It's that base of experience and knowledge that is the difference between success and failure for a lake commando. That and no fear of the unknown, which sometimes can be tough, especially when you're looking at one of the largest freshwater lakes in North America. A good commando also wants to test their skills against the very best in the business. And today, Steve Panaz is sharing his ranger with one of the brightest young stars in walleye fishing, Joe Okada. I watched this guy on TV over the years and he's fished for everything pretty much all over the world and here's just, you know, I'm just kind of a walleye guy myself that uh, it's pretty much all I do, but I'm kind of proud that that's all I do. I know walleyes as good as anybody and uh, hopefully I can prove that to Steve today. I grew up Minnesotan, becoming a walleye fisherman is, a, is part of my DNA and even though I've never been on this section of the lake, I've fished basin walleyes before and I tell you what, spinners are good, but cranks are going to be fish in the boat. Their mission, locating and catching midsummer big water walleyes. I asked him, Steve, have you ever actually fished on Lake of the Woods? He says, no, I've never fished this portion of Lake of the Woods before. When you have a lake that's hundreds of miles long, you've got little sections that are completely unique parts of the lake, and they're almost considered different lakes. So it's even a bigger challenge for me to kind of beat him a little bit out here. Few tasks can leave an angler more breathless than being faced with a clean sheet of wide open water. And few spots offer more open space than Lake of the Woods massive Traverse Bay. Here are the details on what locals call the woods. At over 340,000 acres and more than 65,000 miles of shoreline, Lake of the Woods is the largest freshwater lake in the country outside of the five Great Lakes. It has a max depth of 210 feet, but the majority of giant Traverse Bay on the U.S. side is less than 40 feet deep. There are also over 14,000 islands on the lake, most of which are on the Canadian side to the north. Water clarity on Lake of the Woods is unique. Massive tamarack bogs in the north create an extremely tannic stained water with a rusty red hue that limits underwater visibility to a matter of feet. Habitat is diverse, from well-defined weed lines and classic points in the south to massive mid-lake rock reefs in the north and miles upon miles of wide-open mud-bottom basin. Primary forage includes yellow perch, ciscos, lake shiners, and rainbow smelt, while the dominant predators in the lake include walleye, sauger, pike, muskies, and small and largemouth bass. Conditions are ideal for a late summer big water walleye hunt. Water temps are in the low 70s with light southwest winds, but there's a possibility of scattered isolated thunderstorms late in the day. That's the battleground the lake commandos are facing and we're about to find out their plan of attack, but we also want to know how you would fish it, so let us know online. When we come to a body of water like this, which is gigantic, you know, it's almost a little intimidating, almost overwhelming when you first, when you first launch a boat. But what you really have to do is have some confidence in your electronics and you have to just go out there, let your, let your locators be your eyes underwater, let them find the life for you. And once you find the life, you're able to really hunker down in that general area and try to pick it apart and dial in the best presentation for that area. Lake of the Woods has a great reputation for producing fish. We're going to catch fish today. The question is how and where, and that's what we're going to figure out in the little rumble on Lake of the Woods. 
Uh, I really want to try focusing on some spinner rigs, on some mid-lake structure, which might be holding a few of those bigger kicker fish that we're after. I'm thinking at first sticking with, uh, with the heavier bottom bouncers in that 20 to 30 foot of water. Probably going to mean a two to three ounce bottom bouncer with a short lead to our actual spinner, and we'll just be fishing vertically off the boat and just trying to follow those, you know, hug the hug the contours of where that rock actually meets the mud in the in the, in the bottom of the water column. There, I think that's going to be the ticket. So those bottom bouncers sneaking along those rocks are going to be where it's at. My specific tackle today is going to be a seven foot six inch villain rod. It's got a lighter tip at the length that I can use to put it in the rod holder if I want to. I'm using a braid. I'm using 15 pound spider wire. It's thin enough that it cuts through the water, which is good with cranking. I'm gonna run a, probably a, a 12 to 15 foot lead with 10 pound or, or even 12 pounds uh, fluorocarbon. And I'm gonna run number sevens or number nine flicker shads. If I need to go smaller, I will, but I wanna stay as precise to the cover as I can. I'm gonna use an eight ounce weight in line that allows me to uh, stick to the cover and have more control of the bait. The commandos are going to handle things just a bit differently today. Since walleye trolling is really more of a team game rather than angler versus angler, today's competition will be presentation versus presentation. So we've got Steve Panaz's crankbaits against Joe Okada's spinners. The Panaz crankbait plan gets the first shot. First fish of the day, it's actually a sauger. Looks a lot like a walleye, but if you look at the the top, you can see the little black spots and it's kind of splotchy, that's a sauger. The walleye war is underway and Panaz draws first blood with the crankbait. But young gun Joe Okada has plenty of big water spinner tricks up his sleeve. Oh, nice, nice. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life, Trilene, Anglers Trust, Berkeley Trilene. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Nanofill, the next generation in fishing line. And by Fishhound, when to go, where to go, what to throw. They're getting bigger. Yeah, look at that. Hooked in the beak. What do you say, a 17 yeah. inch? Yeah, yep. An open water walleye mission is underway on Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, and the Lake Commandos are on the attack. It's nothing new for Joe Okada, a rising star in the world of professional walleye fishing. Joe has been a professional guide since he was in high school, and in recent years has become one of the most respected young professional tournament pros in the business. In fact, he's the only pro to qualify for the prestigious MWC, FLW, and AIM championships in the same year. We're just gonna hook this eight ounce weight with a clip right like that. And I'm just gonna drop it. We don't have line counter reels. If we were open fishing off bottom here, I'd like to have line counters. But look, I just, I'm just dropping the spider wire. There's bottom right there, you can see it on the mud. I just closed the reel. Go like that. Frankly, we were replacing downriggers, which we didn't have, with a, a pseudo downrigger, which was a half pound or an eight ounce ball that we just attached via a release system. Do you play with size much on your crankbait? Oh yeah, especially when you have a lot of different options, like on these flicker sheds, you've got a four, got a five, covered, a six, a four, five, six, seven, seven eight, eight, and nine. A solid game plan is definitely needed to actually you know, get started off on the right foot. Unfortunately, that game plan, more often than not, doesn't work perfectly according to plan. And the best way to go about it, for me, is to make small incremental steps one direction or the other to see if I might have been on the, was I somewhat on the right track and these fish just needed something a little bit different or am I so far off base that I'm gonna need to keep making these small incremental changes until I finally arrive at a pattern that I would have never placed into my game plan to begin with. I don't know why we're not getting bit. I'll tell you what, I'll give you one more pass up with these things. If we don't have anything by then, we're going to spinners. You well, down with that? I, well, I told you we'd have two hours, and I got, yeah, it's almost two hours. All right. I'll be willing to make the switch. All right. I'll even turn the boat over to you if you want to. <laughs> you know, when you see as many fish on the screen as we did today, there were very few moments when we didn't have a fish or two or even ten on the screen, is that it's really a numbers game. You need to present your bait to as many fish as possible to find the ones that are gonna bite, the ones that are active enough to respond to your presentation. You got that charter boat's attention over there. 
Now you only have about 10 feet out, correct? I had 10 between the sinker and the, I kept it fairly tight. Oh, get it off there. Yep. What do we got here? Ooh, nice, nice heavy fish. Yeah, look at that one. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh. baby. <laughs> All right, cranking, baby. I guess we can keep him on for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Uh, now that, I love seeing a bite like that because he was- Definitely, he, he did not want to just taste it. He, or he didn't want to just sniff at it. He wanted to engulf the whole thing. You know, I think these reefs, and we mentioned it earlier, I think these reefs are a way to go, but what a gorgeous fish, huh? Gorgeous fish. Look at that. That was the first pass around. I think there's more where that came from, buddy. Can you imagine if that thing was 30 inches, how much that would weigh? Big old head on it. Oh, that's a heavy, heavy fish. It's almost built weird. It's, it's so heavy up in the forest. What was that one on? That was on that's plain the, black and yeah, you black. You like your gold on here, um, don't you? Gold is a great color. It's that water, fish, Claire. It's that whatever water you color. fish that. Nice fish. Cool, man. All right, we're sticking with cranks. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. With a last minute bite, the Steve Finaz crankbait pattern sets a high mark to beat. Now it's time to see if Joe Okada's spinner rig plan can keep pace. This segment of Lake Commando is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, wildly stronger, holds ice longer. The big water walleye war continues on Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, and here is where we stand. Facing a large expanse of open water, stable weather, and moderate winds, the commandos began the day by picking two different presentations to find and catch open water walleyes. Steve Panaz was convinced crankbaits would be the key, while Joe Okada was sold on spinners. The Panaz cranks turned a number of solid fish. Now it's time to put Okada's spinners to the test. You know, here's a challenge for Joe. He wanted to go to spinner rigs today, and uh, it's uh, 10 after 12, and in about two and a half to three hours on crankbaits, we had fish up to 24 inches. We had good fish, uh, good numbers of fish, especially out in the deeper water. What we like about this reef is there's a lot of fish, but we're not getting them on cranks, and so we're gonna switch over to, to the uh, spinner rigs and see if we can find if these fish on the reefs are bigger than the ones that we're getting out in the basin. I think they are bigger. Uh, will the uh, spinner rigs, the flicker rigs, the Berkeley flicker rigs work? I think they will as well, so we'll see what happens. Bottom line in fishing, there's always some luck involved. There's always some luck involved, but the one thing about fishing is you have to be able to put yourself in a position to get that lucky on a consistent basis. And being able to put yourself in that position to be lucky on that particular day comes from a lot of years of experience of, nice of trying to dial in new patterns and, and on new bodies of water like this and picking, you know, taking things away from every body of water that you fish and applying that to some other body of water that comes along down the road. And if you can do that, you're going to find yourself getting lucky more often and you're going to think, hey, that was a pretty lucky bite, but you know what? There was actually a lot more in, that went into it than just that luck. Let's switch blade colors here. What did you have on there? Purple. Look at that, two little fish, he's already getting antsy switching colors. <laughs> I saw you twitching when I was catching the big ones on cranks. <laughs> you know, one of the simplest rigs in fishing is the spinner rig. Unless you start looking at it from a, a fish's perspective and looking at it and breaking it down as components. You've got the hook, you've got the bait, you've got the blade, and you've got the beads. Now, Joe made a comment today that was that really stuck with me in terms of the spinner rig. He said the one constant is not the blade, which everybody focuses their attention on. It's actually the bead because the blade is spinning and the beads are the one thing that uh, the fish are seeing. You've got a nice pretty blade, but it's, it's always rotating. But the one thing that's always showing through the blade as it's going through the water is your bead combination. So as long as you have a, if, that, if you have an orange or a gold or a chartreuse theme going on and you really want to you know, enhance, you know, bring that out of the blade or, or just always have that color going, you got to make it happen in your bead pattern before you, before you get your blade on. Switch blade colors. Didn't take long after you switch. No, it didn't. It's not a bad fish, not a giant, but not a bad one. Whoa, oh. just fell off. This came off. Oh, we're going to have to start keeping a few of these for dinner tonight. 
15, 16 inches are perfect for dinner. That's two fish on the spinners, but they're nothing to write home about. Will the spinner rigs find a few bigger fish, or will crankbaits rule the day? We'll find out when Lake Commandos returns. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Gulf Alive. Looks, feels, tastes alive. Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Not too kinky. No kinks ever. And by Humminbird. Simply, clearly better. The Lake Commandos on an open water walleye run are putting crankbaits up against spinner rigs. After two hours of pulling spinners, the results are less than stellar. So the commandos have chosen their winner on this day and are ready to fine tune a crankbait trolling pattern. How much line did you have out? Ooh, nice one. That's a beaut. Hey, look at that tulipy coming out of his mouth. Well, that's a perch. No, that's a tulipy. That's a tulipy, buddy. We've, uh, we've identified their food source. <laughs> we've got about a six inch tulipy. Definitely smells like one. You see him yet? Oh, nice fish. Nice one. Hey, hey look at that one. Whew. I've learned early on that when you provide a little bit of action to that bait that makes it do a little different thing, maybe hesitate, maybe speed up, maybe actually stop or hit the bottom and bounce off. All of those actions will trigger strikes. You take a minnow bait, you drop it behind the boat, and you twitch it, and it does that little twist like a shiner does. And um, I don't know, it, it works for me. It's a lot of work, especially with an eight-hour weight. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a gym working out doing this I got four one. exercise. I got one. And it works. He's on fire. That's a nice walleye, actually, you know? Yeah. I lost it, buddy. You lost the other gold. You are on your own with gold. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for you because that's the one that's been you producing. Know what? That was the fish god saying, Joe, there's something else better out there. Is that? <laughs> yep. And I'm going to find it right now. By the way, those are $3.99. You're on your own there, too. <laughs> I got a fish. <laughs> that's not a bad fish, Steve. No, it's not. Nice walleye. Back. I think you snuck out to longer leads on me. I'll that back. was at least a 50-foot lead you had on there with the snap boy. It could be. Thanks, thanks for letting me know about that. Appreciate it. I, I was told you, I gave you a clue earlier that I was letting it out for you. He didn't give me a clue. No. <laughs> he just left me in the dark. Oh, good fish, good fish. Yeah. Yes. Which, what's cool is I learned a lot about walleye fishing. I don't Ooh. fish tournaments like you do. That's the whole point of it, Steve. We're, we're going to new bodies of water where you've never been to, and you, you pick it apart piece by piece. And you just go with what you know when you hit the water and just build on it. What's cool, when you got the experience and you start looking for the little things and start putting the pieces together and building a pattern, it's so rewarding. We got some nice fish, some mid 20 inch fish mm -hmm. today, and I don't know, probably 30, 40 walleyes by the end of it. And your crankbait pattern kicked my butt. <laughs> So much for me and my spinners, huh? Oh, but spinners can be good, too. Yeah. Let's head fun, in, buddy. man. Let's go in. Head a ball. Yes, sir. Our winning pattern today was really tweaking our, our crankbait presentation. Early in the day, we were doing very well on this number nine flicker shad right here. It's a, it's a gold bait, black top with a lot of dots on it. And you can see how kind of beat up the bait is. It's got chips and everything out of it from the number of fish. But later in the day, when the, the lake went calm, this profile and this color just didn't produce as much. And so we, I ended up going, you can actually see the line still on here, with a number seven flicker shad. This is a number nine, this is a number seven. Both are great baits. Later in the day, when the fish uh, were less active, we made this switch to this one. And so this particular bait, the number seven flicker shad in black gold, was the winning ticket today. Going commando on Lake of the Woods was a whole lot of fun. Anytime I, I get presented with a new challenge, a new body of water to go attack and try to figure out in one day, it's, it's a lot of fun because you have to bring all your knowledge and all your tools into play to try to get something to work in just a few short hours. And uh, you, you know what? We ended up with a lot of fish. Unfortunately, I do have to sign one of those blasted $2 bills for Steve. 
Yep. I'm Captain George Mitchell. This is Coastal Chaos. Hey, for a live baiting for kings and wahoos, I really like single-stranded wire. My standard rig starts out with a three-foot section of number five to seven wire. I'll move up or down depending on the water clarity and the size of the target species. Hey, if we're up in the Carolinas targeting those little sneaky guys, I'll drop down to number three wire. But out there in the Gulf of Mexico where the big mamas run, it's nothing but number seven. I start all my wire rigs with a high strength mini swivel. It's haywire twisted to my wire, and then I go to my nose hook. Now my nose hook's gonna vary from a 3-0 all the way up to a 6-0, depending on the size of my bait. Next up's gonna be my stinger hooks, and depending on the size of my bait, I'll haywire twist on one to four of these things. Why stingers? Kingfish are notorious short strikers. I also use wire when I'm trolling artificials, but I'll bump it up to number eight or number nine and make it about five feet long. For the really big stuff like sharks, I'll boot it all the way up the stranded cable. Hey, I know it takes a lot to learn wire rigging, but the results are worth it.